In the beginning, it was just, a, it was sort of like somebody wanted to give us money and we didn't know what to do with it. And, and then it got big enough that uh, finally the bishop said, we need somebody to, to manage this and to encourage it. When Angie Smith came here in 44, uh, Oklahoma was a, just a nothing kind of conference. We, we didn't do or know anything. And he put it on the map. It was a seed planted and action taken uh, to actually make this organization happen from nothing. So you have to admire those early pioneers and the people who just said, hey, we've got to start. The Woodworth was a great example of somebody being willing to invest their, their, their wealth uh, into the church and give the church something and, and a direction to use it as it was basically directed toward missions. The tabernacle at Canyon Camp bears the Woodworth's name. We have other structures that the Woodworth money has helped match to build uh, in addition to the support of mission around the world and scholarship that they continue to support. Mrs. Margaret Petrie died some years ago and left a substantial sub with the foundation. I believe much of which goes to OCU. It does. But then there is a, a fund that uh, is uh, primarily for the benefit of churches that are doing new projects in regard to uh, young people. The foundation's grown from, I, I think when I came on in 92, it was less than $50 million and we're up to what, 300, almost 300 million now. Which uh, doesn't mean much, just, just a figure, unless that $300 million is being used for what it should be being used for. And uh, I think it is. I have loved serving on the foundation and uh, over the years have seen um, the incredible ministry that the foundation does, that it's, um, uh, it's taking the gift of people's resources and being incredible stewards of it for the kingdom. One of the things I've learned is people want their money to make a difference and they want their life to make a difference. They really want to make a difference for the kingdom. For nearly 30 years, I've worked at the foundation. In, uh, in 2006, I became president. And shortly after that time, I started to realize the effects of a rare muscular disease that I have that began to rob me of the use of my legs. As the years have gone by, it's also crept into my hands, to strengthen my hands and arms. Every morning is a struggle to just get ready for the day. Just getting out of bed, or buttoning my shirts, putting on my shoes. All these simple things are no longer simple and thoughtless. These are labored chores, and they take more focus and energy than I ever thought possible. This disease came with denial, depression, you know, on and on through the stages of grief until finally you're faced with choices. I just had to start figuring out things that I still could do. And there's still some grief for some of the things that I've lost, but it's, it's a matter of decision that I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move forward. I'm going to continue to seek the Lord. There's a purpose. It may not be God's desire for me, but it all works for the good. I'm pretty sure that I've accomplished more in this chair than I did without it. The reason I get up every day and go to work is that I get to be part of something that I think is truly miraculous. To see a seed planted and a plant grow and produce fruit and produce more seed, I still think it's a miracle. It's a great metaphor for the foundation because that's exactly what happens here. We work with people who have a dream about the church or some ministry that's affected their life or some ministry that they see in the future. They trust the foundation to take care of those seeds and grow them. And someday we harvest them and help people in ways that 75 years ago when the foundation was created, we couldn't even dream of the work that we do today. How far around the world this little place on Classen Boulevard reaches and how real that is in real people's lives. I wish everyone could see the children crossing the bridge from Juarez into El Paso to attend the Lydia Patterson Institute so that they can gain an education for a brighter future. I wish you could see people in Tanzania and the Congo, for the first time in their lives, have safe access to clean water. 
You should see how foster children and siblings are placed in families through the circle of care and how persons struggling with a variety of issues from homelessness or mental disabilities, how they're cared for by the great staff at Neighborhood Services Organization. I wish you could see the single mothers with children at Pearl's Hope in Tulsa who just need a chance to stand on their feet again. I wish you could see how children and adults are provided access to schools and education that'll be with them for a lifetime. For every church in the conference, there's an opportunity to carry out the Great Commission, which is what we're all commanded to do, and that is to go and make disciples of Jesus Christ. That's the first thing that I would tell every church in the conference. Don't shrink from the challenge, go for it. So I guess the second thing is the foundation was an instrument, a tool created by the dreams of Methodists 75 years ago who understood that we live life, we accumulate assets, and what for? What you have accumulated, what you have gained, what you have earned on earth can be used to help so many other people in future generations to come to know the love and mercy and grace of Jesus Christ.